The following pages have been reproduced with the kind permission of the Royal Highland and Agricultural Society of Scotland and Mr. B. Kennedy, the author of this book. something new every day. I'm going to start taking pictures and write my own manual. So this is a 996 and the books don't usually refer to a 996. 95, 995s.
Lui Lui ta shuje. Lui tra. Lui tra. Well, we're get quite getting full throttle with the the foot pedal, but we're certainly getting some throttle, and they're independent of each other. because I'm needing some light being around there in a minute right that's uh, this rod can be tapped M5, 9 or 8 so I threaded it threaded both ends and I made up this little barrel out of a M10 and this end had two little uh, you can see the hole there, I've blown up a bit for you. There, there was two holes for little uh, split pins. So I threaded it as well and I'll get a nut top and bottom. So I just need to get this all put back together. Right. To go through the yard. I just happened to have quite a few of these little M5 lock nuts. Nylon, nylon, nylon nut. is the spring. But yeah, it's not that powerful a spring, but it's this is only you can manually push it in and out. So Let's see if we can feed this in here. Better come in this way, I think. You would think with a tractor you'd have plenty room to get stuff in. Not. Cut that in a good place.
straight into the wall. Takes a wee bit of pulling just to get it to do what it's supposed to do. Alright, we'll get another nut in the back of here. Let's see what happens. Let's bend that in a bit or something. It's quite tight to go into the slot here, which is probably not a bad thing. This is the back front of every other tractor where you you actually you pull it out to put it on and push it in to go off. Most tractors are the other way around. So many spanners are going to be used as an 8mm ratchet. These are nylocks, so we should get this thing in. And started. Nope. M five. Review things. Just catch a thread, we'll be laughing. Everywhere but in the hole. Usual. Oh, there's a bit. Just get that into the, the nylon bit of it. She may end up making a lot of bits for these old tractors, you know, things that were good in their day. May not be so good now. Sometimes make different stuff for them. Works a wee bit better, sometimes works worse. You probably know the superlative of worse is worst or worser. Technical adjustment.
that's it so we now have individual happening if you hit the foot throttle it pushed this down and then it stuck at whatever RPM it stopped at but now they're independent of each other so I can push the foot throttle without moving that but the, I need to adjust the foot throttle a bit I think because it's only giving us about half throttle I'm getting full throttle with that and I've got a return spring now. That's been uh, productive. that springs are stainless steel. I bought a box of uh, springs a while back. I bought this box of springs a while back so they come in handy. Probably never use some of them but I did buy another box of um, tension springs but I misread the the small print. I've been uh, trying to sort out a bit of the wiring of this thing for spaghetti. So put the basics of it down for the front. I haven't touched the back yet. So anything that's green is a power supply for the dash. And uh, this is for the indicator system. And you've got indicator switch, temperature and fuel gauges, uh, four position light switch, later ones that are five position I think. And you've got your ignition switch. Because this has got a heater, the that's a starter, it's moved on to a different Pole, it would be on the so you power in on the red there uh, and then into the ignition side which this is power coming out once ignition's turned on supplies all the greens you've also got live power on the brown and yellow there's various fuses in here and they're all good to check them all uh, the one thing I can't get to work is the ignition light. Now it could be the alternator itself is goosed, which is highly likely. Uh, so I might do that to bits. I've given it a better earth as well. I've got a 10 mil earth cable. Might not have maybe I'll see it to there. So now when you turn the ignition on, you're energizing this wire and all the green power supplies. And then the next, so it's off ignition, heat to the, the glow plug up there. And uh, the glow plug diesel can flow through it. So it, it, when you put it to heat, you're energizing the coil and heating it. And then when you go to the next position, which on this tractor uh, is a starter solenoid, but it also keeps the heater on, so the whole time you're turning the engine over, the heater's still on, and uh, you're getting heated uh, fuel that's on fire, basically. I think that's the idea of it. Uh, so when I get round to the back electrics. There's a switch for 
the gear stick and unless you're in neutral you can't start the tractor so we'll have to wear it in at some point uh, there's also a vacuum switch for the hydraulics uh, and it tells you when the filter's being changed but whether it works or not is another thing then uh, you've got a momentary switch there for the horn as well so I've, I've checked the light switch and you've got power to the side lights and a high and low beam and that's fine that runs to the front no bother uh, this is for the fuel tank sender but I don't think the fuel tank sender is actually working and there's another wire here I've no idea what it does it's just a stray wire so once again you can find drawings for 995 there's not much for a 996 there's AgriLine if you go into their site and um, look at the wiring loom they sell there's an actual picture there but it's uh, I don't know if it fits this particular tractor nothing seems to fit this particular tractor anyway so what I want to do now is try and get the diesel tank back on and uh, go to the oh, this looks okay. another thing I've discovered which will be very handy is the cab is in two bits the windscreen and then it goes like that and then there's a row of bolts across there so I can put the back bit on on its own and then put the cab on on its own uh, the front windscreen on its own but there's a lot of steel work to be done on that anyway let's like see you can make new nylon bushes for here because they're rubber and uh, let's go over an earthware here Oh, it'll, you know what the earth it'll be from there's the other end of this there's an earthware I don't know if you can see it there but I've got a new earth so it'll not matter and that's on the main earth from the starter right so I'm going to go and make some new bushes and this one was turning that one was broken and those two were okay so I'll make four new bushes put some 50mm nylon probably turn it down a bit first and then uh, you will use them rather because the other ones are rubber okay I'll just bring them up when I get near them there well we're running a Swiss cheese style diesel tank here it's hole 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 it's supposed to be hole it's supposed to be hole so what my thinking of doing is uh, This is an old uh, mason heater. It's galvanised and it's quite sound, so I'm going to make a big insert to go in the whole thing and then weld it on the edge here. Probably turn up the sides as well. It's only about one mil, I think. So that's the plan. Needs to be a little bit to get the whole size. Yeah, we'll need to bend that down to get a bit big enough. Probably cut it out and then mess about with it. In fact, that's already got bend on it. Nothing really, uh, there's no real straight edges apart from the, the very ends there. So I'll do something with it. I'll do something with that after. So that's this afternoon's job. I'll just take uh, 10, maybe 12 litres of fuel out of there as well. So the rust was holding it. The drain plug in the bottom was choked. I had to poke something up through it. So that's working now. So that's my plan. Make a whole new end for it rather than trying to patch up those holes. And uh, MIG weld them in because I've done the MIG down.
just a load of welding to do now, I'll have to weld up all the cuts and then weld it on there. Bit of work mate, but give me a right in the wash as I say. I'm going to floor a magnet and pick up all the sharp edges in case we're going to track their tyres. Uh, so my, I like to say my plan is to weld all the edges together, you know, the cuts that I had to make to bend it and then weld it onto the seam 100% all the way around. Probably weld in here as well. I need to plug the holes uh, while we're doing that. So I'll not film welding all the bits. I may film some of the welding onto the seam. I had a quick look on eBay and the, there is tanks on there, £70, £80, pound, but they were worse than this one, some of them. So, I'll just do this instead. I've got the uh, tacking done. Tip for you because I'm using like 40 amps or something. What you can do is if you put a really bright light behind the way you've been welding, then if there's any pinholes, you should see them. Try not putting your eyes open. There's a lot more there, but. All right, let's see if we can get that tap first of all. likes to move when you don't know things in Dress it in as we go. Probably just tack it in places and Bye. 
warning flashing bright lights from welding. People with photosensitivity to light may be affected. Advertencia de luces brillantes intermitentes de soldadura. Personas con fotosensibilidad a la luz puede verse afectada. Aviso de luces brillantes de soldagem. Pessoas com fotosensibilidade à luz pode ser afetada.
Is that a funny angle? We can uh, persuade it to be a better angle. did earlier not <laughs> it's amazing how good condition the back is compared to the front let's get a spanner and see those bolts uh, will come out I've been doing a little bit of tidying up in here just a little bit somewhere because there's diesel coming out just a pinhole no doubt that's ok, kind of expected that it might not even be along here, it might be in here see that wet bit look uh, I'll sort that tomorrow. Oh, no, that's two weeks actually. Maybe three. Bit of grinding, bit of welding. And we'll get it in the end. I wasn't expecting it to be perfect first go. I think it's the welds up the way rather than the 
weld along the seam there. So I'll grind that all out and put in a bit of weld till we get it to stop leaking diesel. And there's something up here as well. Never mind. That's kind of like I say, I was expecting it to leak somewhere. It's not too bad, it'll, it'll be the where I cut it likely. So, I'm running the welder a good bit hotter there, so we're getting a better weld. I wasn't too fussy up here either, and that's where there's another little leak. Anyhow, yeah, we'll just grind that out and fill it with weld. Might just weld it right along that way, rather than the spots. See, see, as it's the place it's most liable to leak. the cap off so it didn't build up any pressure. Okay, I probably won't film that tomorrow, but we shall see. That's all.